Let's do an example here calculating the power of a test and the probability of a type 2 error. So give this example a read. Suppose we were about to randomly sample 16 values from a normally distributed population where sigma is equal to 10 but mu is unknown. We are going to test the null hypothesis that mu is equal to 400 against the alternative it is greater than 400 and we are going to use our regular old z test here. z is equal to x bar minus mu naught over sigma over the square root of n. Now, we decide to reject the null hypothesis if our z is bigger than or equal to 2.4. Why are we using that rule? Well, we just are, and we're going to see how this works out in this particular example. Just an example. For what values of x bar will we reject the null hypothesis? Well, we can work this out. We're rejecting the null hypothesis if z is bigger than or equal to 2.4. But we also know that our z is equal to x bar minus mu naught over sigma over the root of n. And so that's got to be bigger than or equal to 2.4. And so this implies, if we solve that here, that our x bar has to be bigger than or equal to mu naught plus 2.4 times sigma over the square root of n. And if we put our values in here, 400 plus 2.4 times 10 over the square root of n, we get that x bar has to be bigger than or equal to 406. So we've translated now this rejection region of their test statistic being bigger than or equal to 2.4 into our x bar being bigger than or equal to 406. And that's consistent with what we see here in our alternative hypothesis. If our sample mean is a lot bigger than 400, then we're going to end up rejecting the null hypothesis. Now let's look at calculating the probability of a type 1 error and a type 2 error and some power in some different spots here. So if the null hypothesis is true, what is the probability of committing a type 1 error? What is the probability of committing a type 1 error? Well, our probability of committing a type 1 error is what? Well, we have to get all of this stuff down. This is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. Type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true, so it's a probability we reject H naught, H naught when H naught is actually true. That's what we're looking for here. And we've decided in this particular setting to reject the null hypothesis when our x bar is bigger than or equal to 406. That's what one of the things we've done. Or equivalently, if z is bigger than or equal to 2.4. So we could go straight to our standard normal table and look this up. This is when we're rejecting the null hypothesis. And all we have to do is, is get the area to the right of 2.4. But let's go the long way here just to see some of the logic because that might help us a little bit later on as well. So we ask ourselves this question here. When are we rejecting the null hypothesis? I'm going to say that's when our x bar is bigger than or equal to 406. And when is the null hypothesis is true? Well, if you recall, our null hypothesis is simply that mu is equal to 400. So probability of x bar being bigger than or equal to 406 when mu is equal to 400. Okay, we can do this. This is a probability calculation we've done for a long time now. And outside of a hypothesis testing framework, we know that our z is equal to x bar minus mu over our sigma over the square root of n. That has a standard normal distribution. So we can work this out. We can simply convert this to a z and look it up uh, as we've done for a long time. So this is simply the probability that x bar minus my mu over sigma over the square root of n is bigger than or equal to, and I'm going to put the numbers in over on this side, 406 minus 400 over 10 over the square root of 16. Now this is going to be the probability that my random variable z is bigger than or equal to 2.4. Shouldn't be a shock, this is what we were going in as as a premise, but I wanted to go through this long way because this will be, uh, or at least this may help us when we talk about type 2 error and this kind of stuff. So this is just a standard normal type of curve again. Straight up stuff, standard normal type of deal, 0, 2.4, and we want this area. That's all. We want that area. And if we look that up in a computer or a standard normal table, we'll see that that's 0 0.008. So that's our probability of a type 1 error in this spot. Now let's look at our probability of a type 2 error. If mu is actually equal to 402, and recall we're still testing our null hypothesis here, that mu is equal to 400 against the alternative that it's greater, what is the probability of committing a type 2 error? Okay, well, we have to think about this, and we want to know the probability of a type 2 error. So we're going to need to know what a type 2 error is, and that's going to be the probability of not rejecting the null hypothesis, not rejecting 
H naught when it is actually false. When it is false. So a type 2 error is not rejecting the null when it's false. It's false, we don't reject it, we made a type 2 error. So we have to recall again, we're rejecting the null hypothesis if x bar is bigger than or equal to 406. That's when we're rejecting the null hypothesis. So to not reject the null hypothesis, that's going to be when x bar is less than 406. And when is it false? Well, there's some overall global probability of a type 2 error. It depends on what the real value of mu is. And so here I'm saying suppose, just suppose it's 402. And so we can work this out. This is when mu is actually 402. And so we can do something very similar to what we did before. We can simply convert this to a standard normal and look it up. And we do that now except with this mu because we're supposing that that's our true value of mu. So this is my probability that x bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n is less than 406 minus the true value of mu, which we're supposing is 402, over 10 over the square root of 16. And if you work this out, this is my probability, this is my random variable z. So this is my probability, my random variable z is less than 1.6. And we plot out our little graph here. Here we have 0, here we have 1.6, and I'm looking for that area. And that area, if we find that in the table, is 0 0.945. So that's a very big number. We're going to be making all sorts of type 2 errors, and that is because our true mean is just a little bit bigger than our hypothesized mean in this setting, and so we're going to make all sorts of type 2 errors. Okay, now let's look at a different example calculating the power. If mu is actually 405, what is the power of the test? So we want our power. Now, power is the pro 1 minus the probability of a type 2 error, but it's usually easiest to just think of it in its regular old terms. Power is the probability that we reject the null hypothesis. Power is the probability of rejecting H0 when it is false, when H0 is false. We like tests to have pow high power. We like to reject the null hypothesis when it's false, typically. So we're simply going to go at it in these terms. When are we rejecting the null hypothesis? We're rejecting the null hypothesis when x bar is bigger than or equal to 406. That's our rule. And when is the null hypothesis false? Well, in this setting, I'm saying mu is 405. So when mu is actually 405. And then I just do what I've done above, basically, probability that my x bar minus mu over sigma over the root of n is bigger than or equal to 406 minus what I'm supposing to be my true value of mu, 405, over sigma over the root of n. And that is simply the probability that my random variable z takes on a value that is bigger than or equal to 0 0.4. And if we plot that out, and here's 0, and here's 0 0.4, then we're looking for this area here. And that area is 0 0.345. And that's the value we're looking for, and that is our power. Now, in all of these types of questions, getting the logic down is the most important thing. Don't try to memorize all these things and throw numbers in haphazardly or what have you. You really want to get the logic down, because that's the whole point of asking these questions. You want to think them through and understand what these terms mean.